Greetings in Jesus name. This is Jacob Nainan from Bangalore, India. I am happy to bring you another message in the series Pointers Along the Way. These look at practical aspects of the Christian life and are sent out weekly, God willing, also through email, WhatsApp and Facebook. You can read all my previous messages as well as articles and books on my website called Comfort and Counsel at www.c-n-c.org May the Lord bless you as you read or listen. If you wish, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel and also tell others about it. This is pointer number 815 and its title is Offended with God? John the Baptizer had a great role in history as the forerunner for Jesus, the voice in the wilderness proclaiming the arrival of the Messiah, as a witness certifying that this was indeed the Son of God come to save his people from their sins. He said that he recognized Jesus as the Son of God when he saw the Holy Spirit coming upon Jesus after he was baptized. John chapter 1 verses 31 to 34 I did not recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. John testified saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. John knew that he himself was not the one who was significant, but that his role was only to point out Jesus. He was content to be that, and he was fine when the focus of the people shifted from him to Jesus. But then, he was put in jail because he pointed out to King Herod that it was wrong of him to take his brother's wife for himself. This caused a great upheaval in his mind, making him to question things about God's relationship with him. Did he ask God why he was in jail for standing as a prophet for God? Did he have to deal with questions about whether this was a punishment from God for something he had done? Did he wonder why Jesus wasn't rescuing him as he was doing for many others, even raising people from the dead? Altogether, John may have felt confused, alone and left aside by God. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus whether he was really the Messiah. Luke chapter 7, 18 and 19 The disciples of John reported to him about all these things. Summoning two of his disciples, John sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the expected one, or do we look for someone else? Before we throw a stone at John, let us examine our own life. Have we ever been in a similar situation, and have we ever felt like he did? Have we felt that we too have stood for Jesus, proclaimed him to others, seen and heard about the different miracles he was doing for others and then wondered where he was when we found ourselves in a difficult situation? Isn't this an unexpectedly common experience? Jesus' answer to John looks rather strange. He told John not to get offended with him, but to look at all the miracles that he was doing for others. Luke chapter 7, 22-23 and he answered and said to them, Go and report to John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, the poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who does not take offense at me. Would that be a sufficient answer for us? What the answer boils down to is this. Look at what I am doing and understand who I am, 
and what kind of a person I am. That is what you need to know in order to take you safely through everything that happens to you. We like to always have a good time and we would like God to ensure that He keeps things trouble-free. But God has better things stored for us which are much more precious than a trouble-free time on earth. Our trouble is only short-term, whereas His blessings are eternal. 2 Corinthians 4.17 For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, far above all comparison. And God knows that there are some spiritual riches He can give us only through trial. Acts chapter 14 verse 22 Strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in their faith and saying, Through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. The other thing is that each of us is special to God, who knows that we are all different and have come through different experiences. So He has a custom-made training program for each one of us. We can't expect that what He has done for someone else is suitable for us. When we see what God is doing for others, we can learn more about Him that will increase our faith in Him. He expects this faith to carry us through our peculiar situations without getting offended with Him. James chapter 1, 2 to 4 Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. May the Lord bless you in your life as you have listened to these words. Thank you.